Welcome to Monday, the 13th day of June, 2022, your day with a podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Cowboy State Daily has more original Wyoming news content than any other news organization in the state. Cowboy State Daily, sign up for their daily newsletter and check them out on their Facebook page. Well, cooling off a lot west of the divide, hot again east of the divide. It was a record-breaking weekend of heat in some areas of eastern Wyoming, Colorado, the high plains into the southern plains and the desert southwest. As we just had a heat pump come out of the deserts and into the region. But a Pacific front is going to bring more windy areas, colder temperatures, showers and thunderstorms, and some mountain snow. That's right. Cooler all areas Tuesday and Wednesday. The coldest areas will be the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies and the Northern Plains. But some of the cool air will get pushed further south as well. Now temperatures are going to rebound. It's going to go right back to very warm temperatures by Thursday, Friday, and the weekend as the southerly wind flow returns and brings back that heat. But there's going to be subtropical moisture in that heat. And I've got good news for folks on the western slope of Colorado into Utah, into New Mexico, into Arizona, western Wyoming, eastern Idaho, then up into Montana. Along and west of the Continental Divide, there's going to be a, a pipeline of subtropical air coming up out of Mexico. That monsoonal moisture we start to see, it's going to get a big push northward, and that's going to lead to rain-producing thunderstorms on the western slope this weekend. So keeping our fingers crossed that that could bring some folks some badly needed rain. Today's satellite photo shows very well this Pacific cold front, there's a lot of rain and thunderstorm activity along this boundary this morning. And as I'll show you here in a minute, some snow heading up into the high country. There's the center of low pressure right there. Ahead of it, southerly wind flow bringing air right out of the deserts. So the heat will continue to get pumped in east of the divide for one more day today. And there you can see it on the 500 millibar chart, that southerly flow pumping that heat in with the lows coming on in, three actually lows with this system as it comes on through. As it heads east, that warm air out ahead of it will again bring 100 degree heat to the areas of the southern plains. And you can still see the heat gets up into southeastern Wyoming, the front range of Colorado, down into the desert southwest. But you can see this plunge of blue here with the much cooler air coming on in. So we're looking at temperatures in the lower 50s by later this afternoon in Jackson Hole, while it's gonna be in the 90s to near 100 along the front range of Colorado. Quite the contrast that's coming. How much of a contrast? Well, just after 7 a.m. this morning, this is Togety Pass, west of Dubois, Wyoming, going over the pass on the way into Jackson and Yellowstone Park here. You can see up high, already cold enough to be producing some snow. So we're looking at an image of snow falling and we're looking at temperatures in the 100s, really not that far away. There is going to be some severe weather, as you can expect. That contrast between the colder and the warm will produce some severe weather from northeastern Wyoming, southeast Montana, through the Dakotas today, and some general scattered showers and thunderstorms with the front elsewhere. Look at these temperatures relative to average by 6 p.m. By 6 p.m., the cold front is right about here. Look at these temperatures. Look at all that purple there. This is a significant cool down. And then, of course, you see that stark contrast on the other side of the front. These are the overnight low temperatures forecasted tonight. And you can see we've got 20s and 30s in western and southwestern Wyoming, eastern. Look at parts of Utah here. I mean, this is cold. Look at these temperatures back here. Very, very chilly for the middle of June. And these are temperatures that are going to be cold enough, as we just showed you. We've already seen it falling in this, the higher elevations of western Wyoming and western Montana with this system. But it could snow tonight as far south as the Uintas. And a little bit of light snow maybe in the Rocky Mountain National Park as well as that cold air surges south. By Wednesday morning, the center of the low is headed across southern areas of Canada with a cold front moving through. So there is going to be a cooling trend over all areas here with this trough. And here's the heat. Hot, high pressure gets pushed into the eastern areas of the United States, so the heat wave gets shifted to the east. Temperatures by Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning, again, very, very cold. This is Wednesday morning, so you can see that the coolness really sticks for a little bit longer. Look at the high mountains of central Idaho here in the lower 20s. So we're talking about this cool air coming through, but by the end of the week, we talked about kind of like a rubber band. We just snap back 
and we warm up again. This is by Saturday morning. High pressure reestablishes itself over the central plains, and here's that clockwise flow bringing southerly winds in. Now here's another low that's gonna get hung up along the west coast. The counterclockwise flow around that low helps the southerly wind flow. So it's like a straw, just gonna take moisture and air out of Mexico and bring it straight northward. So there's gonna be a strong northerly push of subtropical air and warm temperatures getting pushed up right along and west of the Continental Divide by the weekend. And you can see, now this is a satellite photo, photo of water vapor. There's a little bit of water vapor, enhanced water vapor here and across areas of Eastern Mexico, but not a lot. But you see this plume right here of moisture? It's gonna drift westward by later this week. And then what'll happen is it's gonna get drawn northward. This is the precipitable water forecast for noon on Thursday. The green shows where the air is more moist. The brown shows where the air is really dry. So we're going to see very little shower and thunderstorm activity as we hit mid to late in the week. But I want to show you what happens. This is Thursday. This is by Saturday. See the blue here and a little bit of pink coming up into the four corners. This is that subtropical air. Look how far north it gets pushed right along the continental divide and just west of the divide. And this is by Sunday afternoon. That plume is there going all the way up into Canada because of the high here and the low here and the circulations working together to bring that moisture northward. The end result is gonna be this. This is by Friday afternoon. You can see showers and thunderstorms along the Sierra Madre of Mexico, getting into Eastern Arizona, New Mexico, and getting pushed further north. And then general thunderstorms out here in the Midwest. By Friday, this is what it looks like. By Saturday, you can see there's two areas of thunderstorms out on the plains, but look at all the thunderstorm activity in Arizona, the Four Corners region, getting into the west slope of Colorado, then getting up into Montana here. And as we get into Sunday and Monday, it gets a little bit more widespread. And you notice this area right here is an area that's gonna be really, really active in eastern Utah, western Colorado, and the Four Corners area. And the end result could be some pretty good rains. We haven't seen a rain forecast like this in this area here for quite a while. So there's gonna be an enhanced area of showers and thunderstorms. They're gonna be good rain producers. Now, if you look east of the divide here, the front range of Colorado, these are plains of Colorado and southeastern Wyoming, will be kind of the last to get into the thunderstorms as the moisture is gonna be right along and west of the Continental Divide. Have yourself a good Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.